Um, so with that, uh, Mr. Clerk, can we move to Bill 48? Bill 48 amends Chapter 14, Article 1 of the Hawaii County Code, 1983-2016 edition as amended relating to alcoholic beverages. Prohibits the consumption of intoxicating liquors at James Kealoha Beach Park. Reference Communication 332, introduced by Ms. Leloy. I guess I'm here to testify about this bill for no drinking in Kealoha Beach Park. I am the person who lives, I guess, closest to the park. I live adjacent to the park land. And I've been there for nine, ten years. But the Aina Ohana has been there much longer than me. <clears throat> the drinking, the abuse of all this other stuff, kind of getting out of hand. I've personally been almost run over a couple times. I walk my dog nighttime. For me to go out nighttime, i got to carry a weapon. And there's a lot of people tell me that <clears throat> they don't feel comfortable. I thank Sue, Sue for the kind bringing up this bill. It's all on you guys' hand. We have young Young students there, kids from Kamehameha School, they come all the way over there, past my house, use the steps for their water activities. Now, if we let allow all this kind of stuff to happen, we're setting a bad example. We're not taking care of our aina, which is the most important to me. It's our ohana, our kamali, and our aina, our land. The opala that they leave behind, no good. It gets in the ocean. They're burning rubber down there, the rubber gets in the ocean, contaminating the water. I can see nothing good about it. I drink beer. I drink a lot of beer. I drink it illegally at the park. But I do it, you know, <clears throat> I kind of watch where it, what I do, and I am aware of the law. I've been arrested before. But it's just kind of got out of hand, like, they just pushed everybody down to one area and left the whole thing alone. There's not, there's not even a parking lot. That's on road. It's Kilkow Road. There ain't no freaking park over there. How can you have a park with no parking lot? There's not even one freaking stall that says, so oh, this is where you park. You know, there should be something that designates, and I'm getting off the hand again now, talking about parking and stuff like that. But Mr. Kim wants to build this park on the top of Mauna Kea or somewhere up, up there. Now, if you guys got millions of dollars, why don't build some pavilions for the people so they can get their permits, drink their beer, have fun in the pavilion, close them up, okay, go home. You have 30 seconds. Okay, shoot. <laughs> uh, I thank you guys anyway, and it's all on you guys' shoulders. That's all it is. I'll go along with anything you guys can decide. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Um, so what you folks have before you folks is a communication that I put forward, and it was just in an effort to provide a little bit of context of this particular beach park. So what you folks will find on page one is a, a real property tax map uh, of the park itself that's outlined in red. So that's the general uh, boundary lines for Kealoha Beach Park. Uh, the second graphic that you have before you folks, and it's sorry, it's a little blurry. It was just hard. But that's a Google Earth image from the ocean of that park. Uh, the second uh, photo you folks have is basically a copy of um, the roadway that runs through that particular park, which we call Kilkaha Road. Um, and as our testifier mentioned earlier, there are no parking stalls. People just kind of park and, and take up place. But also, um, you'll also see that, one, the roadway is bad. Uh, but the other thing is there's a rocky shoreline there. Um, so it really isn't conducive for swimming unless you're an experienced swimmer. Uh, I see more fishermen or uh, you know, other more experienced uh, water users in the area. Um, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, you know, gated, uh, the yellow pylons. That's just basically um, blocking off a, a grassy area uh, that exists there. 
there are no pavilions at this particular park. So people will just randomly park and just kind of put up tent um, and, and just hang out. And then the, <clears throat> the final image, uh, which is a little bit better image, is just an overview of the entire park. Um, uh, and what you see there is, uh, you know, a one residence that's adjacent to the park. Um, this concern was actually initiated by the community. I've had a number of uh, community meetings with the Kilkaha Association, Lele'ivi Association, uh, other beach users down at Richardson Beach Park, Carl Smith Beach Park, and uh, like our testifier mentioned, it's just getting out of hand. I believe over the years there was a large level of tolerance, but that tolerance is really beginning to erode at this point. So what also I want to be able to do is, uh, if I could ask uh, Captain Greg Esteban and Community Policing Officer Matt Lewis to come forward, please. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Esteban. I'm the, I'm the uh, police captain uh, for the uh, South Hito Patrol District. Uh, been doing this job for 32 years. Uh, and during my, uh, during my uh, years as a patrol officer, uh, we've had to respond to a number of calls uh, for police assistance at, at, at uh, Kailua Park. Um, and now, uh, as a district commander, uh, it's, it's quite evident that the uh, uh, increase for calls for service is uh, putting uh, a little bit of a, uh, taking a toll on, um, uh, on our manpower. Uh, we have to allocate resources in this particular area uh, to address uh, uh, crime, uh, accidents, uh, both in and out of the, uh, the ocean. Uh, so uh, our department fully supports uh, the ban on alcohol in this particular park. Uh, thank you, Captain Esteban. Now, if I could move over to Community Policing Officer Matt Lewis. Matt is actually assigned to that community, so I, I wanted Matt to share with you folks a little bit uh, more detail, just because he's just a little bit more boots on the ground and intimate with some of the concerns that are happening in that area. Good afternoon, Council Members. I'm Officer Lewis. Um, I've been with the department uh, just shy of 10 years now. Most of my time, career has been spent in Hilo. Um, with the patrol level. Um, I've been in the community down there in the beach area for the past year and assigned to that section. Uh, since that year, uh, even prior to that, the complaints and, like the captain said, the calls for service at this particular beach park um, continue to grow. And uh, alcohol is one of the main factors that drives a lot of the complaints or a lot of the calls for service we get there. Um, we get from traffic accidents to fights, um, major assaults with weapons at the park, including bats, knives, people have been stabbed there. It's not a one-time event. And when we do respond to those calls, you need to look at the responsible parties, most of the times they're intoxicated. Being in the sun, no covering, no pavilion all day. And if you go down there, you'll see... The street uh, looks more like a drag strip than a street from the rubber that's left behind, like uh, Mr. Lau said. Um, and hearing the complaints from the community this past year um, and going to the community meetings, and it's, it's not just residents, even the lifeguards at the nearby beaches have gone out of their way to make it a point to say, we need to make a change here. And it's it's not that I'm against drinking, but this park has a problem that I think we as people in the community and responsible people need to address and not only on behalf of the police department but as myself a community member in this district you know it's what I see is it's really dangerous there I wouldn't take a child to that beach I'm, I'm gonna leave it here for right now for the rest of my colleagues to ask any questions um, I am really asking for your folks support now this is probably just one of many more steps that have to happen, 
not only at this particular beach park, but other beach parks across the entire island. And so as a community with our police department, with our Department of Park, Parks and Recreation, we've also engaged the Department of Public Works because some of them maintain you know, the, the roads and the facilities there. And then the fire department has also been engaged. Um, I also have to thank um, prosecuting attorney um, Mitch Roth, who really spearheaded um, this initiative, um, one, to identify a lot of the public safety concerns that are coming from the community. Um, and Lisa Faulkner Inouye is also here from the prosecuting attorney's office for the rest of you folks to ask any questions. But our police officers and our prosecuting attorney's office has a lot of data of the type of complaints that are coming that really does support this initiative. And going forward, we will continue to be at the table working with our community partners and our public sector partners because uh, it is our hope that this can become a model on how we address parks in an overall sense. Now, every park has a different amenity. So we have our beach parks. Some have pavilions, some don't. Some are conducive for our keiki. If you don't mind, I'll continue. Yeah, go ahead. Um, some are really great for our keiki. Some are great for surfers. Um, and these are just our beach parks. We still have other parks that are great for sports. You know, and as we begin to make adjustments to our code, there's going to be a need for some very heavy lifting from our parks department to take on uh, administrative rules and guidelines for these parks. One concern that uh, our police officers have is when they get complaints at these parks, there's no consistent rule whether you can or cannot drink, the hours that you can or cannot be in the park, they're all very inconsistent. And so part of the larger goal is really getting to a place where there is a clear level of understanding of what is permitted at our parks and then how they should be used in a manner that they're built for. So I'm going to yield at this time and listen to the rest of my colleagues. Thank you.